attending this lecture series. Today is the last day of this popular lecture series, and uh, today we have our eminent speaker, Dr. Manoj Kumar from MNIT. Uh, first of all, I would like to welcome uh, Manu, Dr. Manoj Kumar. Uh, it's an honor and privilege for us to have you with us, sir. Kindly accept my warm regards and humble welcome to this popular lecture series. And uh, I'm sure that this session would be very interesting and informative like uh, the past lecture series. Actually, we want to organize this event uh, as offline, but uh, you know very well, uh, uh, we as a community are being put to corner by COVID crisis. And uh, we again stand together to make all the efforts to come out of it. Sharing knowledge and experience through digital platform is an attempt to reach to the masses in this corona period. So it has made possible the connectivity in this uh, pandemic lockdown period. Uh, so and, uh, we at School of Applied Sciences always uh, continuously working uh, to maintain the continuity of uh, knowledge sharing uh, to students and scientific community uh, uh, by lectures and LMS, webinars, lecture series, etc. In this effort, in this continuity of effort, we have organized this lecture series and hope every participant like this uh, effort. And uh, since uh, today is the last day of this event, and I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, everyone for part of this event. Uh, it has been our pleasure to host all the participants in this lecture series. And the, believe me, the participants are very enthusiastic as uh, I have seen uh, the lectures uh, in, during the lecture. And I'm thankful to all the participants for, uh, uh, to attend this popular lecture series. We have been fortunate to have uh, so many eminent persons from academia and industry in this lecture series. I'm thankful to them also. I'm sure that the participants uh, must have benefited by attending this webinar. I'm also thankful to all the sponsors for this webinar uh, with the general support. I, uh, it would have not been possible to organize uh, this webinar without them. And uh, on our part, we have made sincere efforts to enhance the quality of the lecture series. And uh, for this, I am thankful to uh, Dr. Ankur Jain, convener of this uh, lecture series, and uh, Dr. Neha Kapoor and Dr. Lokesh Gambhir as organizing secretary of this uh, uh, lecture series. And uh, also, I would like to thank our website team uh, for uh, providing the extraordinary support uh, to organize this lecture series on Facebook and other uh, social uh, sites. I am once again thank. Thank you to everyone whose contribution and made this lecture series uh, you know, successful. And thank you all. And uh, I would like to request Dr. Neha to take the session ahead. I would like to uh, listen Dr. Manoj Kumar. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, so taking the session ahead, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce our speaker, Dr. Manoj Kumar, to all the participants. Dr. Manoj Kumar is currently working as an assistant professor in Department of Physics, Malvia National Institute of Technology, Jaipur, India. He completed his PhD in physics from University of Rajasthan, Jaipur in uh, 2010. During his PhD studies, he also worked, at, worked in Max Planck Institute for Chemical Physics of Solids, Dresden, Germany from 2007 to 2009. He had also visited Uppsala University, Sweden, Italy and International Center for Theoretical Physics, Italy during his PhD research work. He worked as a postdoctoral researcher in Institute of Solid State Physics, IFW Dresden, Germany during 2010 to 2011. He was appointed as postdoctoral fellow in the Faculty of Engineering NUS Singapore during 2012 to 2014. He was awarded prestigious Inspire Faculty Award by Department of Science and Technology, New Delhi, India in 2014. He also received Early Career Research Award from Science and Engineering Research Board, New Delhi, in 2017 to work on topological insulators and topological superconductors. His core area of research includes nanocomposites, nanomaterials, CNTs, and their devices, thermoelectric power generators, electronic and magnetic phase transitions, uh, iron-based superconductors, topological insulators, and two DEG materials at high pressures, low temperatures, and high magnetic fields. Synthesis and characterization of nanocrystalline, thin films, and bulk single crystals through different routes. He has wide experience in electrical and magneto transport studies using a different type of pressure cells for hydrostatic and uniaxial pressure, pressure in different cryogenic systems. 
he had published more than 60 papers in high repute journals and had delivered talks at various national and international institutions so far he has also organized 11 national and international conferences workshops on the advanced topics in the physics research he has been supervising many ug pg and phd students for their work on different research problems he is a member of executive member of soft material research society india also he is also a member of american physical society usa thermo physical society of india and indian association of physics teachers so without taking much of the time i would like to invite dr manoj kumar for uh, taking the session head today he would be delivering a talk on the topic tuning the fermi level in topological insulators over to you sir uh thank you uh, madam uh, so it was really nice introduction rather a longer one i also thank uh, the conveners of this event uh, professor gorav sharma and professor ankur jain and both the coordinators Uh, dr lokesh and dr neha it is uh, um, like uh, mentioned by gorab sir that uh, we are facing this covid 19 uh, restrictions so i am also working from home uh, we are uh, completely operating online mode all the classes online and everything online and we somehow now get uh, habitual of this uh, online platform to maximize the learning so uh uh let us uh, we start um, the discussion so this talk uh, i would like to mention that uh, we can keep it in a way of a normal class lecture as i was told by the organizers uh, it is mostly the students ug pg students and uh, it will be really nice that if uh, we can keep it a informal discussion sort of thing so do not hesitate if you if you face any question just unmute yourself and can discuss in between okay so today's uh, discussion is based on the tuning of fermi level in topological insulators so actually this topological insulators is a hot topic and recently they are highlighted so i will be talking about a brief introduction to the topology and topological insulators what are important aspect of topological insulators and why we need this fermi level tuning the importance and the techniques and uh, one important aspect of this lecture will be focused on the experimental details so basically uh, the fermi level tuning and this study is based on two different techniques one very common that uh, maybe all of you may know four pop technique to measure the resistance of the material and another one is hall effect so these two techniques combinedly can tell us about the band structure peculiar details of band structure we can explore using these two techniques and these two techniques you must be familiar with them if you are a ug or pg science student then these are the part of some bachelor or master course okay so in physics lab we use this four probe measurement technique for measuring the band gap or the electrical conductivity of the materials 
semiconducting or metallic both and uh, Hall effect uh, we also may, uh, use to study metals and semiconductors. So how we can use these techniques and how we can develop a sophisticated instrumentation for this to produce something which is uh, of uh, higher standard. So the experimental detail of this instrumentation part, I will. Uh, I, I feel that uh, most of the time we face this difficulty that we do not have this facility, we do not have that instrument. We cannot do this or we cannot do that. So uh, I will also uh, try to include uh, the details about the technical requirements instruments so that this can be managed somewhere if someone want to improvise these details uh, we can have a separate discussion and then i will present on some results which we recently uh, Uh, recently achieved because uh, based on these techniques and systems okay and finally i will summarize all the things so when we talk about a material basically it's a matter and we will be discussing about a new phase of matter that was introduced in theoretically in 2005. So topological insulator, they were introduced in 2005, theoretically. And then since then, we are developing the theoretical and experimental evidences to witness several new characteristics of these materials. So when we define the phases, of the material. Conventionally, we have these three types of material, gas, liquid, and solids. And we define them because of the symmetry of the atoms, how they are arranged inside that particular phase. So gas will have no symmetry, liquid will have short range symmetry, short range ordering, and solids will have long range ordering. So whenever there is a breaking of symmetry, we go to another phase. So most of the phases or phase transitions are characterized by this. But in topological insulator, we do not have such a phase transition. Rather, the phase is topological. And this phase or this topological nature doesn't depend on physical parameters. So what is the length of the material? What is the size and shape, everything? We'll see uh, more about it during the lecture. And similar things you might have heard about graphene. So, and other 2D materials like MOS2 and other uh, uh, single layer, mono layer, and uh, several other 2D materials. They also behave very interestingly, and we can observe or witness the quantum uh, transport, quantum behaviors in different different characteristics. Now, say if we talk about this topological nature or topological transitions and phases, so before we go in detail, this topology, the term. It is basically a mathematical term and it is used uh, in the study of objects, uh, geometrically similar and different objects. So according to this nomenclature, this donut and this cup, they both have the same topology. So reason being, they, 
we can deform this shape to make this cup with a single hole here, with a single hole here. But without, we cannot continuously deform these two in this third one where we have two holes. Okay, so for that we need to physically change this and that will require a common type of phase transition you can say to go for that phase. So we are talking about a topological phases so where this physical shape will not matter although this thing will matter they are topologically same and this double wing structure is not the same as this and these topological insulators uh, to begin with the most fascinating characteristic is these materials they conduct at the surface but they are insulating in the bulk so if we have a piece of topological insulator then inside the bulk so inside this material everywhere it is an insulator and on the surface all the surfaces it is conductor it is not a normal conductor this they have this uh, very specific nature of conduction that this they can this conduction is spin polarized so i must have somewhere the list this conduction on the surface it is spin polarized it is dissipation less spin polarized that's why it is it can be used in spintronics and quantum computing the future electronics and future uh, computation and things as well as it is also important in terms of fundamental studies we can if you have ever heard of Majorana fermions the particle which is its own antiparticle so Majorana fermions while fermions magnetic monopoles all these exotic uh, observations can be present in the topological insulators. So it appears to be that this topology and topological insulator thing, it is uh, new, but it is actually not new. So this story began in 1985 if you um, know the effect called quantum Hall effect. Quantum Hall effect, which was discovered by Klissing. And then that was also the, the first observation of topological nature of conduction. And then from there to here in 2006, we, the Nobel Prize was awarded for the discovery of topological insulators. So earlier, although these phases or these transition or these observation, they were related to topological insulator type of behavior, quantum behavior, but we did not give that name to them. But now we know that these, these are interconnected and it is a consistent development towards the understanding of quantum phenomena. So uh, for me, it began in 2009-10 when I, when I heard about this thing, that a material which is uh, actually insulator but it can conduct at the surface so normally the material we see and find they are either insulating or conducting or semiconducting something like that but 
they don't do both the things simultaneously okay so sometimes we have a material which undergoes a metal to insulator transition below a certain temperature or above a certain temperature or certain parameter but that too is not simultaneous effect here simultaneously the bulk inside the material is the insulator and the surface the whole conduction takes place through the surface only and that too in a very uh, uh, protected way that the surfaces has to be like this so it, it posed my mind and i started uh, uh, thinking of that before that i was working on superconductors and other intermetallic uh, uh, assistance but not uh, in this direction so it posed my mind then i started looking at the the details so we can understand it very easily if we if we look at the the elemental energy levels this is very common uh, on the left hand side what we see is uh, uh, energy levels present in any specific uh, element so they are energy levels when we make them um, together then we make a solid and we make bands and then there are band gaps and all so this is a the common thing in solid state physics so uh, to understand this behavior we first start from the single atom so what happens if we consider the elemental energy levels and we apply uh, these energy levels are uh, split by some crystal field also and if we apply uh, magnetic field then also we can split this so it is i think g man is splitting you must have uh, learned somewhere and if we increase the magnetic field then this is splitting increases and at some field it happens to be that the energy level which was actually lower in energy as compared to the other level now some part of this energy level goes above in energy and the energy level which was actually higher in energy as compared to the other lowers its energy okay so the degeneracy is lifted there is a, a set of uh, levels and we can separate them so this effect gives rise to one thing that this levels so the lower energy level is now at higher energies and higher energy level is now at lower energies and if we think carefully of this so what is actually this that some part of the conduction band and the lower energy one is balance band some states of the conduction band they actually go to the balance band okay and some part of the balance band states they go to the conduction band so there is a band crossing and whenever there is a crossing point here so again to lift the degeneracy then there is a gap open but we also have some states which actually originally belong to balance band they are now in conduction band and some states which were actually part of the uh, conduction band are now part of the balance band this type of structure is actually similar to this for elemental thing this is in case of solids solid material okay here we applied high field this actually can also be achieved by a spin orbit coupling a very strong spin orbit coupling actually induces such type of effects in materials so this inverted band structure so where the conduction band is lower than the balance band okay is required to make uh, 
topological insulator. So when such a material with inverted band structure is placed in vacuum or air. So we know that vacuum or air, they are typical insulators. Okay, insulators with a gap. So their conduction band and balance band, they have a band gap of the order of more than five electron volt. So when we place such a uh, uh, inverted band structure material in air or vacuum, then think of the states at the boundary. So the electrons here, when they hit the boundary, and here the band structure is normal band structure, here the band structure is inverted band structure. So when this, we go from this material to this material, actually this, the structure, the band structure should regain its positions. So because of that, what happens? This band should go here and this band should go here at the boundaries. So at both the boundaries, not both, actually all here, everywhere. <clears throat> so when this is imposed, then at the boundary, we know that whatever the gap it is here or here or here, at the boundary, this gap must close when they go from higher to lower, lower to higher energies, the gap must close. So what happens in a topological insulator? That inside the bulk, there is a gap. And at the surface or at the boundaries, there is no gap. And it has to be present there because of the topology of the band structure bands okay since it was inverted bands present here in this material so at the surface of this material it has to undergo this way okay so the this is called topological protection we cannot just remove this gap closing the surface has to be in this way without any gap then only we 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 can sustain this way okay so this is a simple picture and this simple picture is uh, related to our quantum hall effect and uh, before i go to the quantum hall effect i must uh, tell you a little bit about Hall effect, then it will be easier for you to understand the things. So in case of uh, Hall effect, if you remember, we, we have a piece of material and we apply perpendicular electric and magnetic field. So consider this is x direction, this is y direction, this is z direction out of the phase, out of the paper, out of the slide. Then if we apply our electric field in this direction, the current flows in this direction. And also we apply a magnetic field in perpendicular direction, suppose along z direction. So when we place a material solid in mutually perpendicular electric and magnetic field, so Bz will be in this direction, Bz. Then we see a voltage develops perpendicular to both these electric and magnetic field directions. And that voltage is Hall voltage, okay? And this voltage also tells us about the nature of the material or 
the relative content of electrons and holes. So when we subject this type of electric and magnetic field, then electrons and holes both they flow under the influence combined influence of electric field in x direction and magnetic field in z direction and because of the lorentz force they they will follow the path and uh, this curvature the curvature is governed by the magnetic force force because of the magnetic field that is q v cross b and that is perpendicular to both so the velocity of the charged particle is along x this is z so this force will be along y direction somewhere and because of that the electron or hole which were linearly traveling in this material under the influence single influence of electric field now they will feel a perpendicular force and maybe they start circling so the the curvature the curve depends upon the strength of the magnetic field so if we keep increasing the magnetic field then they rather hitting the boundary the electron may get a very high curvature and the same way holes can also get very high curvatures so what will what can happen that all the conducting conduction electrons they actually start circling around somewhere and when this is the case then there is no electron left for conduction our current will it will not conduct because all the free electrons they are now occupied they are now localized and this state which is which was induced by a strong magnetic field along z direction is called quantum hall insulating state okay so this is just to hint you the direction where we can understand this thing quantum hall insulating state but this quantum hall insulating state uh, uh, doesn't only make this material insulating it makes the material insulating in the bulk in the, in everywhere inside but if we look carefully the electron or hole or the free particle which was already at some boundary this side or that uh, other side that electron will actually hit the boundary again so consider this electron it will also undergo this circle and it will hit the boundary again and since the magnetic field is applied it cannot go back okay because because of this magnetic force it will always apply in in the same direction so it will force this particle to bounce back and then again start traveling but in the same direction it cannot bounce back go back in this direction they all has to do like this so this type of effect gives rise to a channel conducting channel this channel cannot be killed as long as this state is there at the edges it's a two dimensional material at the edges uh, we will see this and similarly the other half will be present on the other surface so whenever this quantum hall insulating state is induced then this edges conducting channels they also get in, induced in the material okay they cannot be separated and that's here so the insulating one we we have a gap between conduction band and balance band and then quantum hall insulator where there is a 
insulating state induced by the magnetic field. But there is also some edge channel, edge state, which is here. And whenever there is this type of insulating state, there will be always be a conducting edge channel. And what if this is not induced by the magnetic field, rather it is induced by the spin orbit coupling, very strong spin orbit coupling. And spin orbit coupling, it is sensitive to up spin and down spin. And when this happens, our up spin and down spin, they, we will have two conducting channels actually, okay, rather having a one which was spin insensitive in case of quantum hall. Here we will have spin sensitive channels. So suppose up spin traveling right, then down spin will be traveling left, and there will be a pair of spin sensitive edge channels. And these pair of spin sensitive edge channels, they will cross this gap, just like here, a single one. Here we will have two, one for up spin, another for down spin. And that's the um, the contrasting thing. The topological insulator will always have this edge channels or surface state crossing the gap. And we will have two different type of carriers. One which is because of this conduction band balancement, they belong to here. And the carriers, they belong to these states, surface states or edge states. Okay. So depending upon different characteristics of the band structure and the material, there are already several class of topological insulators. Okay. And if we... Uh, go to the details of the the importance of the edge channels or surface states they they are they they host a single dirac cone we will see what the dirac cone is actually and they are topologically protected we cannot just wipe them off they they will be there all the time the conduction is dissipation less what does this mean, dissipation-less conduction? Dissipation-less conduction, we can we can consider here, the, considering the edge state here. So this electron will always move in this direction because of the influence of the magnetic field. Okay? And even if there is a something, some defect, and it hits this defect, but it cannot be backscattered. So the dissipation-less means no backscattering. And this makes these materials very in interesting that even if there are impurities or some other defects, we will see very seamless conduction. Okay. And the seamless conduction or this no backscattering thing is on top of that, they are also spin polarized. Spin polarized means that all the time, if our up spin is traveling towards right, down spin must travel to left, must travel to left. They are spin logged. Okay, so their spin and momentum, they are interrelated and they are logged with each other. And this happens because spin orbit coupling takes the role of magnetic field. What the role magnetic field played in quantum hall effect it is now played by a strong spin orbit coupling and now the effect what we call is again a hall effect but this is a spin hall effect okay and this was observed recently Theori first it was predicted theoretically and then it was observed experimentally also okay so um, let me complete this thing quickly. So based upon this, we will have always the conducting channels and also we will have insulating bulk. 
and these two on the surface we will have this spin polarized conduction and this spin polarized conduction or the the surface state this is the depiction of edge state in the bulk conduction band and balance band so there will be such type of surface states which are also spin polarized and they cross each other in between the bulk and conduction band and this dispersion is a linear dispersion so this linear dispersion between e and k right all the band diagrams they are ek diagrams basically dispersion relation between energy and momentum in the material so this e and k if it is a linear one then it is similar to the the photons we they they travel they can travel with the velocity much higher than the normal particles so this is uh, again uh, very useful characteristics uh, for the ismentronics and uh, upcoming advanced devices okay and uh, for the present discussion we will limit our discussion to the uh to the uh, 3d type of uh, topological insulator and among 3d we'll also limit our discussion with the only a to b3 type system okay and this a to b3 type system we we limit our discussion because uh, we see a reasonably insulating uh bulk here okay and we'll explore these materials uh, namely some mixed compositions of bismetalloride and antimony telluride and uh, these two materials they are basically commercial thermoelectric materials uh, in the market if you go to buy some thermoelectric cooler or thermoelectric generator so most likely you are going to have this Bi2T3 and SB2T3 based thermoelectric materials. So they are there since more than 50 years already, but we did not realize this topological nature of the conduction of electrons inside them. So the main problem with this uh, type of material is that as we see that there are two types of conductions, bulk conduction, which is also kind of a uh, semiconducting behavior with the gap and this gap here is less than very small is something like 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 electron volt much much smaller than silicon or germanium so it's a narrow band gap semiconductor material inside the bulk basically and as we see that if the band gap is very small sufficient energy of uh, can be given to the electron to overcome this gap and then what we see conduction through bulk electrons and conduction through this lossless surface electrons and what we want we want this surface electrons to conduct the most bulk electron they should not conduct bulk electron conduction means the normal conduction what we have in semiconductors okay so we are more interested in here so our efforts will be to maximize this uh, surface conduction so this to maximize this surface conduction first of all we can do this we can increase the surface area like we do in nanomaterials yes it is true we can do so we can also maximize this conduction or we can also tune the bulk conduction basically by making it a compensated one so making a compensated one means that making the the fermi label here the fermi label here at the center of the balance band and connection band so that the bulk conduct minimally and we can directly do this by carrier doping. N-type doping or P-type doping, I think you are familiar with. 
so we can dope directly some uh, additional number of electrons or holes into the material and we can uh, we can tune our material here so to make it uh, n-type, we will dope the material where the EF goes close to the conduction band. For p-type, the EF goes close to the valence band. So we can do this type of doping. But if we do not want these two, or if we want to explore some other route, then we can also, this is the interesting part, that even without this doping or with any carriers or impurity, no extra n type no extra electrons and holes we can also tune this using the internal strain okay and we can do this with the isovalent substitution isovalent substitution actually uh, is that uh, we do not we do not do this pentavalent or some valency difference in the dopant rather we have the same valency what we do but the size of the material will be different i will come to that and additionally we can also apply high pressure we can externally compress the lattice we can change the lattice volume lattice parameters and then we see this uh, effect on the band structure so in this attempt what uh, we can expect that if our material is bi2 te3 considering so this material has five layers two layers of bismuth and three layers of tellurium so here we can count this is tellurium this is tellurium this is tellurium and this one is bismuth this one is bismuth so two layers of bismuth and three layers of tellurium so we can actually replace both these positions so if we replace Bi with antimony. Bi has larger atomic radius as compared to the antimony. And this will induce uh, sort of a volume contraction in the material. In the same way, if we replace this tellurium with selenium, there also we can compress it further. Okay. And indeed, if we compare the, the lattice parameters, in case of both layer bismuth and all three layers tellurium, our lattice parameters are in this range and the lattice uh, is slightly bigger as compared to when we replace this with selenium completely. Okay, so the similar effect takes place when we dope this when we replace bismuth with antimony okay and this has impact on the band gap eventually it increases the band gap in this material it's not all the time necessary that compressing will increase the band gap but in this material it is increasing the band gap so this isovalent substitution we can first tune this material using one type of replacement like replacing bismuth with antimony and we can think of in in between somewhere we we can have this this fermi label to be in the middle of the band gap bulk band gap to maximize the surface conduction or to minimize the bulk conduction so we can have somewhere here we expected that this will be in the gap and to further optimize the position we can actually now go in other direction by replacing tellurium with selenium and we can actually verify this effect comparing the applying with the external high pressure okay so this this way we are not actually doping the material with any extra number of electron or holes and we also can use external high pressure that is that can be used on this on that or any material we can compress this using forcefully you can say okay and we see these effects 
and this gives the possibility so when we 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 looked upon the literature we find out that our resistivity should change in this way when we the fermi label is going to the band gap the resistivity will be maximum and if we keep doping the things then this comes down so it can be tuned from n type to p type using this doping using this replacement scheme so we can in between somewhere we can have our fermi label in between the band gap and this can be manifested by the hall effect measurement okay so hall effect has very uh, interesting uh, outcome that the hall voltage our hall voltage it is close to zero or uh, hall coefficient actually is close to zero it's related when uh, we have equal number of electrons and holes something like an intrinsic semiconductor and this will be less than zero when we have n type carriers in majority it will be positive when we have p type carriers in majority okay so this this way we can actually uh, uh, approximate the 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 positioning of fermi label so these combinedly these two measurements electrical conductivity and hall we we can actually use this to tune and to figure out the position of the fermi label now let us uh, have a look uh, what we need to do we first can prepare the material we then use the doping and then we study so i will be little quick because uh, the time is passing fast so at least i will need another 10 minutes to show you the the results here we made the single crystals so uh, i will have to skip all these things uh, they are in our lab in the group and we we can make these uh, single crystals in the lab and we can also do the characterization of these uh, in materialisa center in mnit okay and this uh, set up for a low temperature transport measurement it is uh, very much customized and we have this uh, measurement capability of something like 20 samples at once in one go we can measure down to 4 kelvin temperature up to 0.4 tesla field and comprises with the uh, high pressure we can also apply pressure uh, something like up to 3 gigapascal okay and we can measure the characteristic using a very customized program this is also a lab view program which is uh, purely homemade and here we can uh, see the results the data before measurement we need to process the samples as you can see here is picture of one piece of sample for electrical conductivity we use normal four probe measurements these four probes they can be used to measure the the resistivity of the sample and additional these two probes they are here to measure the hall voltage of the sample and we measure this simultaneously okay and for the pressure measurement we use a piston cylinder type pressure cell that can go up to 30 kilobar and uh, we can mount actually multiple samples at once in this pressure cell so it's uh, the uh, the close look of sample mounted on the sample holder for high pressure measurement 
and we can measure the pressure using the manganin or at low temperature by some superconducting transition of lead or tin okay so i will skip further this experimental detail and rather i will show you how we can tune the fermi level by this isovalent substitution okay so when we replace this uh, bismuth with antimony then uh, we can go from 0 to 2 uh, by slightly increasing the composition. This is the SEM images of the sample and which is, uh, it shows that our samples are very much layered. So, multiple layers of bismuth and tellurium present here in the sample and they are very flat, shiny surfaces. Composition-wise, all the samples, they, they were tested using SPS and composition also is uh, within the limits. So it's not exactly matching with this, but we tested the composition. It's uh, around this. And when we compared the, the lattice parameter, there was a lattice strain present in the material. So that a strain actually increases with the doping and it becomes uh, sort of a stable type of uh, behavior, uh, intermediate doping, and then it decreases for the end composition. So because of the strain present in the material, we see a different nature or positioning of the Fermi level. This is strain. So from SB2T3 to Bi2T3, we can imagine this was P-type. And then when we increased the bismuth in place of antimony, uh, here we had uh, Fermi level in the gap. For this composition, the resistivity was maximum. So we can say that here we have the Fermi level well within the gap. And this was also confirmed that we actually tune the Fermi level from N type to P type, basically P type to N type, while going from SB to T3 to Bi to T3. Okay, so this was a confirmatory test. So measuring the Hall coefficient, we can actually confirm that we are our Fermi level, where our Fermi level is, whether if it is close to zero, so means uh, uh, both N-type and P-type carriers are in equal uh, portions. And if it is positive, P-type carriers dominate. If it is negative, N-type carriers dominate. And uh, because based upon that input, we can actually locate this, its position in between the gap. OK? So. Yeah, I think we can just have a discussion and I will rather skip the other results before uh, I stop. I acknowledge the, the support uh, from the all the group members of high pressure physics lab, mostly my students and uh, other colleagues and Metal Research Center for providing these uh, facilities for characterization. And it is open to all, actually. I would uh, I forgot to mention. It is open to all. Anybody can use uh, those facilities. And we can visit. you can visit the website for MRC. And Professor Takayuki Ichikawa from Hiroshima University, Japan. So many of the measurements like XPS and XRD, we, uh, we, we utilize the facilities present with uh, his group. And uh, in fact, uh, Professor Rankur Jain also, uh, when these measurements were conducted, uh, Professor Rankur Jain, he was also in Hiroshima University, Japan, the same group. And all the funding agencies uh, for providing the research grants and all, and my previous uh, mentors, institutes, and at the end, uh, my students. So, so basically we have three different directions of uh, research and these uh, students, they are working on some problems related to topological insulators. 
these three already completed, these three are ongoing. Here, some batteries and supercapacitors, some energy materials. Uh, so, oh, Puja and Kuzbu, they completed. And uh, sensors, we are also working. So, these students are basically current students. And other ones, they are completed. Most of the things I discussed, it was basically from the research work of Dr. Anup. He is currently in Japan. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for your kind attention. And sorry, uh, this was a little late presentation. Yes, sir. Thank you for it. Uh, if you may uh, allow, then we can wait for question and sessions. Yes, sure, sure. So, I'm location coordinator for this uh, piece, and let's put up the questions. The first question being asked by Dr. Kriti Shivastava. What are the different methods to prepare bismuth chloride nano Okay, different methods to prepare. Uh, actually, this uh, one good thing with bismuth telluride is that this uh, bismuth telluride is very easy to synthesize. So if you're looking for the methods, I think you can go with the chemical route. Uh, we have actually used, uh, we have actually used to, sorry, uh, this is, uh, we have made this nano crystals or uh, nano materials of these uh, bismuth based materials uh, including nano particles nano rod nano sheets nano flowers everything and using solvothermal or hydrothermal method okay so in uh, i believe that if we can do this uh, then you can also do okay so for nanometal synthesis what our experience was Hydrothermal method is better. It gives more homogeneous uh, material uh, morphologies as compared to solvothermal. So, uh, the next question is again from Dr. Kriti uh, How can we increase the performance of entire materials? Uh, sorry, sir, I couldn't get the uh, completely the question. of N type. Performance in terms of uh, thermoelectric uh, performance, I think. Yes, sir. So, for uh, thermoelectric performance, uh, the core idea is uh, mm, we should have maximum electrical conductivity uh, and minimum thermal conductivity. Okay, so uh, if you, you can design some route where the electrons can travel easily, but phonons cannot travel easily, that type of material which support electron conduction and which demotes heat conduction. So uh, phonon conduction is more common and very uh, uh, continuous and very efficient uh, if uh, we have a long range ordered material. Okay. Also electron conduction is very much facilitated with this. But if you want to uh, uh, depreciate this effect, thermal conductivity, you can make nano materials. You can make some small, small part or some composite material where we can have uh, minimum uh, thermal conductivity and uh, we should also take care that electrical conductivity doesn't go down that much. So for the maximization of thermoelectric characteristic, uh, this can be a, a guiding direction. Okay, thank you, sir. Sir, uh, there are many pl uh, plentiful of questions in the chat box. Uh, shall we take them one by one? Uh, uh, OK. 
ID. So here we are stopping our question answers, and for further proceedings, I am uh, I am delighted enough to invite Professor Ankur Jain for the validatory session. Ankur Jain, sir, you may please proceed the session. Uh, thank you, Dr. Lokesh. Uh, thanks a lot, Dr. Manoj, uh, for accepting our invitation of delivering this talk on such a short notice, actually. and finding time from your busy schedule <clears throat> it was such a wonderful lecture thank you so much uh, my dear participants so today's lecture from dr manoj brings us to the end of this popular lecture series organized jointly by the school of applied sciences and center for renewable energy and storage in this series we conducted four lectures including that of Uh, Dr. Shivan Seni from Kyushu Institute of Technology, Japan. Dr. Dayanand Kumar from National Chengdu University, Taiwan. Dr. Bhavak Pulsreshta from CSM CRI Bhavnagar, and today's lecture by Dr. Manoj Kumar, MNIT Jaipur. This uh, gave us the opportunity uh, to bring together not only the research <coughs> fraternity from India. by interacting with eminent researchers from two major institutes in india but also the world by interacting with researchers from japan and taiwan this lecture series benefited more than 300 participants which included not only the students from suresh gyan bihar university jaipur but also from other institutes major institutes from more than 10 states of india as well as more than 10 countries worldwide not only the students but also the faculties from various institute worldwide could get in depth knowledge from <coughs> of various kind of research being conducted uh, ranging from uh, thermoelectric materials which were delivered uh, which was delivered from dr shrikant uh, neuromorphic computing applications uh, delivered by dr dayanand functional membranes from dr bhavak kulsreshta and topological insulators uh, today from dr manoj kumar these all lectures uh, were devoted to the different fields but can broadly be categorized to the various family of materials which are actually useful for our energy needs uh, i i am sure that all of you must be knowing that energy is one of the fundamental need of human life the knowledge of these materials these fundamental topics covered in all these lectures is really essential to develop new materials and apply them to fulfill our growing energy needs i am sure uh, this must have provided motivation to the students to find new fields of research and contribute to the development as one of the convener of this lecture series i would first of all like to thank all the distinguished researchers who spared the time to prepare and give the lectures to our participants i would also like to thank uh, the participants who regularly regularly participated in this series and gave us the motivation to conduct many more such events in the future lastly i would like to thank the management of sgbu uh, president professor uh, ritu gilhotra convener dr gorav sharma and the members of our team uh, especially i would mention dr neha kapoor and dr lokesh gambhir as well as dr uh, kriti shrivastava whose unconditional support formulated this lecture series as successful and fruitful event 
I also would like to convey my sincere thanks to Dr. Kamlendra Avasti, uh, the Secretary, Soft Material Research Society, for providing the support to this event. Looking forward to seeing you all, seeing you all again. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Over to you, Dr. Lokesh. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your deliberation. Uh, again, thanks all the participants for joining in in the complete accessory. And I can see many messages uh, saying thanks to the, to the keynote speaker and all requesting continued informative sessions. So, request on their behalf, conveners Professor Anpur Jensa and Professor Sharma sir, to keep the initiative running and let us again bring multiple speakers on a common platform for. Uh, for easy reach to our student conditions. With that, I officially call this session close and the complete culmination of the popular lecture series. Thank you so much for joining in. The feedback links will be shared on your recent mail IDs. The feedback links will be, circulate, uh, will be sent to email IDs and the certificates will be issued. Thank you. Thank you so much.